today's show of The Human Project, your podcast for inspiring stories. I do have Leah Schenk here with me. Despite that her last name sounds very German, she is not German. She was born in Marseille and she is a very famous tattoo artist. I am Corinna Rosa Falkenberg and I am looking forward for our today's interview. Leah, have a very warm welcome. Thank you very much. I'm really honored to be here. How do you feel? Um, well, really good. Really happy to be here in Bali. How lucky are we, right? Oh, I feel very lucky, as you said. So it's beautiful and it's an amazing bubble where we are in. Lucky us. A bubble. I would say it's definitely a bubble. <laughs> you are a tattoo artist. And I saw part of your tattoo work yesterday because you showed me your portfolio. And you mentioned that your work is more art than working on the skin itself. And I've seen those beautiful drawings. They were all coming from you, from your inner soul, from your source of inspiration and creativity. I would like to know, like, where do you get that creativity from that you need to do your work? Um, I would say in the first is in the emotion stage. Mm -hmm. So uh, creative come from within. Energetically, mm -hmm. I have to be out of my head. Mm -hmm. um, I went through a period in my life when I had to learn this um, with lo losing my creativity. Um, I was so much in my head, so much thinking that I, I lost the connection. And we say that as a woman, the, the creativity and the energy is in the womb, actually. So when we could get out of the head and connect to the wound easily, um, then my creative will flow easier. But then as well, artistically, I found myself looking a lot of on pictures, on photography, on movies. I'm really inspired from the 60s, 70s. Um, I love those women with mm. those beautiful, you know, um, high waist, skirt, really um, tight and pretty basic colors. I love basics. Um, yeah, I love fashion as well. I love I do, I create a lot of women. Uh, most of my style, they come from creating women. And um, they, yeah, it's a representation of femininity and beauty and way more, yeah. Because when I saw your portfolio yesterday, I was astonished. A large part of it consists of beautiful women that are very powerful, very self-confident. And I would say some of them like showing provocative provocative like uh, positions uh, but in a good sense like in a way like I'm a warrior better not to start fighting with me like but still not losing their femininity you know what I mean they had the good balance in between being a warrior which one can say is the masculine energy and the feminine sensuality would you view yourself also being one of those women you are drawing can you see a part of those women you are drawing within yourself well yeah obviously um and it's true that i and i do it instantly to be honest mm -hmm. i haven't put the goal and be like oh I, i want them to look like that it's just it came to me and this repeating patterns of mm -hmm. mine to draw them like that came and i want to bring this fierce and wild Uh, part of those women, you know, and most of the time, um, for the time, women came to me and they, when they asked me a piece of art, one of the first things that I ask is, which emotion, what, what do you want to bring uh, when it, we're talking about face mm -hmm. or, um, and as well, it's really funny because not a long time ago, a friend of mine, told me that um, she, so you know how it goes in Bali, you connect with people, but when you connect with them, it goes in, in beyond, it goes really deep, really easily. And, and 
um, so I will, we will hang out for a while and then she saw my artwork after, I don't know, maybe a month and she was like, it's funny because you're so soft and your hard work sometimes could look so dark and which is true you know i've been some part of my life darker mm -hmm. a little bit harder and it's true that i i put some skulls every now and then and i put more dark and then more a little bit uh, rough you know and she was like and now I, I meet a different person you know and which is really true but there is as you say there is the warrior bit behind all of this, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you would say that that warrior is also part of your personality. It's one piece. Sometimes maybe it's showing up, so you know maybe also how to fight, yeah. Also how to speak up. I mean, at the end, you're a woman who is independent. You own your own money, right? You're living around the globe, one can say. You are free. I can see your inner strength. So this all needs also to come from somewhere. So would you say, yes, now I can show my soft sides, but you mentioned it before, you had dark periods in your life as well. And those were maybe also the warrior time. There was the time for your inner warrior to show up. So my question, those women, are they part of your personality, the women you were drawing? Yeah, obviously. Um, we say artists, they create um, auto-portraits. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people come to me and like, oh, that really looks like you. Mm -hmm. And that's not the goal, obviously. It's, it's mm -hmm. as well the face that I see every day, right? Mm -hmm. But um, to come to the, the experience as, la as a human being, obviously the confidence and the fears and the wildness and the freedom that I want to represent in my art is a part of me and is a part of my experience. It's because I lived and I proved to myself that I can do that, that mm -hmm. I can face my fears and that I can, I can sermon this. And that from, from then, then I can have the confidence enough to, to believe that mm -hmm. is a part of me, you know? And most of the time, the women that come to me, they, they come from my art because that's, that's what they want to bring on themselves. That's the energy they, they want to call in. So maybe they have not yet reached that state, but they want to have one of your tattoos representing something they would like to have more in their own life. I believe we all. <laughs> I believe we all warriors on their own yeah. way. Mm -hmm. We are, and I, and I really want everyone to believe so. Um, it's just sometimes life puts you in in a place mm -hmm. that you really sucked into a certain way of perception to see yourself or to live. Mm -hmm. um, and it's so beautiful if, if I can bring this and let those, these women mm -hmm. believe that they are like that, you know? Um, yeah. What does empowerment mean then for you? I mean, I'm, I'm like, how many years older than you? I think even 60 years older, mm -hmm. other generation. <laughs> So when I now ask you as a representative of a younger generation, what does female empowerment mean for you? Uh, empowerment for me, well, we, I grew up in such, such a generation, right? We want everything quickly and, and when something doesn't work, we throw it away and we think we can get better, right? In relationship, in jobs, in everything. Um, but what's empowering for me is, honestly, is, is what I've been working really hard this last year is self-love. Mm. Honestly, I mean, there's so much more, right? Mm. But when it comes down right now is, if I love myself, then I'm in peace. And I can love anyone and I can love them for who they are mm -hmm. right and I can forgive and I can it's it's I can be in peace and yeah so it's super empowering and from then it comes down to have the freedom but is is a is questionable is during this weird period um, what is empowering to be able to be authentic mm -hmm. Authentic, be myself, who I am, you know who I truly am. And I'm discovering every day who I am because we tend to hide ourselves or want to 
blind in or being accepted a certain mm -hmm. way so we have tendency to believe that oh no that this is me this is me but actually we lost ourselves somewhere and and i found myself um understanding who i was really who i really i am through hardship you know when i end up to be on my own in a dark and darkness place in my life and be like now who i am what what's the purpose of life what, where I, like and and from then you start from zero and you're like okay actually i don't really like this and actually yeah if i may come in because now i do have uh, the idea of yeah of course who am i and what's the purpose of life for me and i think everybody can relate to that and now i think of your artwork the tattoo and the tattoo is like constantly on my skin like you have asked me just before Coconina, do you also have a tattoo and i said no at least not yet because i was always like kind of resistant to the idea that it is permanently it's a permanent friend on your body yeah the idea is to keep it and i would say like if I look at my life, luckily I would say I have developed my personality. So I'm not the person I was 10 years ago, not 5 years ago, and most probably not even the person I was just like a week ago, because I'm not my past. Yeah? So what is your recommendation? Someone shows up uh, and says, look, I do have a tattoo and it says, I love David. I'm not in love with David anymore. What should I do? What is your answer here? Well, um, Itamar asked the take, I would say first, don't fall for trend. I don't know if it's a tempting, because that's what we do as human beings. We see other things we like, we want it for ourselves. Even if it is, I will suggest to not do that. Because so not go for trend and fashion what's hip. Mm -hmm. Exactly, because it ends up to turn around. Mm -hmm. um, and then the second advice I will give is, you know this tattoo that you would like one day i believe it will become a part of yourself and i believe that you will end up to like it because it's your skin it's yourself mm. and it's a memory of a period of time with who you've done it and which which mm -hmm. where were you and and how you felt at this moment you know mm -hmm. and this is the art of the thing that's all it's a collection a collection mm -hmm. of moments as as an yeah. aesthetic art having on you. Mm -hmm. yeah. I like the idea to embrace what was, so mm -hmm. I understand you, but nonetheless to go on and let it go. Exactly. And it's mm -hmm. like it's like maybe one day um had a com someone had a complex for mm -hmm. they know and then they end up Mm. I hope for them 30 years or later to love their nose because it's a part of themselves. So if you end up at some point be like, oh, I'm so tired of this tattoo. I don't believe in this. Except if you go in something that other people may don't like, I believe you will mm. always love it, you know? Because mm. you accept it. And I wish for everyone to accept themselves how they are. Yeah, it's self love again, right? Yay! <laughs> When it comes to where your clients would like to have the tattoo on their bodies, what is the most common part where you tattoo people? Um, so with the chance of being of being 10 years in the mm -hmm. profession, right? And uh, carrying a certain statue, then people come from my art and this is so rewarding to be honest. It's like I've I've waited and I fought so much to be where I am today that the day that people come and really for what you do is it's it's so I'm so grateful for it but so in that point I can people are really open to listen to my invitations and in terms of of um in my artistic eyes and quality of work uh, then I will advise people to do it in either the legs or the the arms because um in terms of skin the skin is really different depending of a different area of the body and for example in in the ribs where i wouldn't put a face which i do a lot 
because of the movement and the elast uh, el um, elast elasticity elasticity yeah. <laughs> of the skin. Both exactly. not English speakers. <laughs> it rolls. It mm -hmm. rolls. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I would. That's why I love tattooing women as well because uh, the skin is so soft and and. Um, so I was not thinking about that. That of course there's a difference also when it comes to men and women in regard of the skin. What is the men's skin typically in comparison to women? What is the difference? Harder. Hmm? Yeah. Harder. Harder. And it always uh, depends. Uh, culturally, mm -hmm. like where the person grew up and come from, so the skin is different. Mm -hmm. um, at some point in my life, I moved to Sweden, and that's actually where I really start my career. And um, people would love what I do because it's a lot of black work, and they have really. Um, what is black work? It's only black. Plaque and what, as a plaque on the skin, it's no color is used. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Actually, we can use black work as a style, use as well white, mm -hmm. uh, which it gives a little bit of light, which is beautiful. But um, black and gray, mm -hmm. we could say as well. Um, but what was I saying? I'm sorry. The differences of the skin between men and women. Yeah, obviously, and the, and the um, the culture as well. So I was in Sweden, and people are really uh, tell because they don't spend ah, a lot of time in the sun. Their skin are amazing, and they love they love really dark tattoos. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's such a, a beautiful country to tattoo in as well. They're so covered, so they they have no problem to get their body filled up. Yeah. And I have to add, maybe here in Bali, tattoos are very, very popular, right? And I have to say, like, the it's really artistic what you can see here, like, drawn on people's body. It's it's really beautiful. It's so beautiful that even I've thought about having a little tattoo somewhere. <laughs> so um, you told me your clients come and they ask for also your idea on what they should carry on their body, right? So it's a kind of... I would even say like interaction. You help also clients to maybe find a piece of themselves or what they would like to become then later on. How important is the connection between you and your clients? And does it happen that you come across a client where you say there is an energy or there's a feeling or whatever, but you feel like you need to decline the client? And if so, what do you do then? Um, yeah, I mean, I never, I mean, yes, it happened uh, that the energy between us didn't work out, um, but um, it's like, we all human, you know, even for me, some days it's because there's a real exchange of energy mm -hmm. and this is as well, it's a real connection, you know, I love to really exchange with the person in terms of I take the, the idea and I'm creating um, so I, I like to really put them in the place where I want them to feel they created as well the mm -hmm. design but in the years of work um, I realized that what I on the end you know when I got closer for myself I realized that actually the connection to my customers um, are probably the most important now left for me mm -hmm. when before that wasn't the case but what I mean is is yeah mm -hmm. you told me also that you have been started as one of the first women in the tattoo business in France like more than a decade ago what were the biggest challenges to overcome when you have started becoming a tattoo artist? What were they and how did you overcome them? So I started tattooing when I was 17 years old. No, so young! <laughs> <laughs> um, and in the industry there was only, I, I could remember in France, I think it was only a couple of, of women tattooists. So I, it was really hard for me 
Mm-hmm. I didn't been I haven't been taken seriously. I never found an apprenticeship, so I'm in Was it because difference. you were a woman or because you were so young? Um I do believe I mean in the industry they want people mm-hmm. to be young because it's a really old school way of uh thinking and behaving as an industry and um, so the tattoo industry is an old-fashioned industry. That's oh what you, my god! Yes. Really? Yeah. yeah. Wow! I thought they were all like fancy and cool. No, what happened is um, they they so as it's such a gratifying and rewarding profession, um, they think that an apprenticeship must be hard. An apprenticeship must to be made for sucking the floor and and you know grab the rubbish and do that over and over for t- for a couple of years and even like put your put the apprentice in the age of, of i mean i went honestly i went it was a few years ago i went in a guest pass um guest spot in switzerland and um the apprenticeship there he went to depression after a year because they pushed him i remember we had to drink after a long day of work one day and um one of the tattoos he was grabbing away um the, um the chili that was a one on the cocktail and i was like for what do you use this it's like the apprentice have to eat it tomorrow and just for fun just to push somewhere because they believe you have to go to the war you have to be strong and so they want to make you hard yes that's horrible mm-hmm. and because is it a game of power then if i may ask it sounds for me like a game of power it is and um, i mean tattooists men they 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 are seen are really ego egotistic you know like really not humble and full of themselves and I'm fucking honest and it is the case especially in France you know and fair enough you know it's a difficult mm-hmm. job like they ask a lot of focus they ask a lot of work as well um, if you want to be good you have to put on time you have to put on practice and I really fought for where I am today and to come back to my experience um, <clears throat> so I I 17 years 18 years old I wanted to find an apprenticeship and I knocked on a lot of doors and I got a lot of doors closed. Um, yes, because I was a woman and most of the time, I mean, they couldn't take me seriously. One didn't want me because his wife, no, no, no. And for, for not really legit reason, you know, and at some point I even gave up mm-hmm. and um, I worked on bars, I worked on restaurants and I was like, well, if it's that hard, but somewhere within me, I just believed that I will do it because I really always had this inner belief that anything I, I, I wish I could accomplish it. Because when I saw your portfolio and you next to me yesterday, I could see like how your eyes were shining and how you were like blowing up when you talk about your work. So I got the impression it's something you really enjoy doing, right? It's your passion. You love doing what you're doing. So was it like you had the dream of becoming a tattoo artist and you want to go for it, that was for sure, and you knew you can manage? And if so, how could you cope with those declines in your life, with the doors being closed? What did you do then to not get into depression or saying like, I just give up, it's easier, I find something else, maybe a nine to five job? Well, as I said, I went to do this. But I believe that the only thing that stops us to accomplish our dreams are our belief. Mm-hmm. Is it means it's only us. If it's it's your subconscious, if you don't believe you can you do mm-hmm. something, you won't be able to do it. If you truly believe you can do something, whatever how long it will take, you will accomplish it. And you what did you do to not give up then that belief because for a lot of people they might have in their head like oh i would love to become abcd this is my inner passion this is what my calling in life is for my even my purpose but somehow they don't manage to get there you know 
they always might might say like when I have saved enough money, when I'm old enough, when I don't know, maybe when I once I'm retired, then I do what I really love doing. So how did you manage to not give up what you were believing in, what you call your your inner belief, what you know what you are the best in in your life? Well, I ran into a video not a long time ago. Mm -hmm. I hope it will reply a little bit to this mm -hmm. uh, question. But um, it's he was saying as an artist, I can't remember who it is. Um, but he was saying that to become good at something creative that we do, that we're passionate about, something that we want to experiment as a job, making money mm -hmm. out of it, uh, there is a time of two years before to be actually good enough at something. Mm -hmm. And during these two years, you have to keep on practicing and keep on, even if you, you know that your working is not excellent, but you know you mm -hmm. have good taste, it, then it, you need to keep on going, keep on doing. And then, yeah, just pay, patience as well, patience with ourselves. And it comes back to, it's really parallel of, of our generation, you know, instant, of, instant gratification. But in that point, you can't be a career, passionate, uh, successful person on something if you give up too early. Mm -hmm. Practicing and people are like, yeah, art is in, is in genetic. Yeah, I do believe so. It is a little bit, you know, and it is, in, in it is as well in my experience like what I live to make me artistic and see life artistically. Mm -hmm. I think everything in artistic, everything So you mean beautiful. like the talent is something you're born with, right? Mm -hmm. You might have a talent you're born with? Mm -hmm. I believe we're all gifted. Mm -hmm. Yes, I do. Um, but I wouldn't say I am born tattooist, I'm born designer. No, I, I practice those mm -hmm. and I worked really hard for it and maybe I could have been practicing fashion design I could mm -hmm. be really good at it mm -hmm. right now you know because mm -hmm. some people are better with just you know like mental work yeah this right? is what I mean like maybe you were born with a certain talent but it not does not necessarily mean that you will be just by that successful in your life you need and I think this is your point you need to practice on it whatever kind of talent you have and I'm convinced Everybody of us is having talent. And I would even say, but that is my belief, that we all have creativity. We just lose it on the way. Like if you have a look on like little kids, I do have two nephews, it's unbelievable. You do not do to give them toys. If you just let them, they will find everywhere a creative way or find something that makes them happy and being passionate about. So they actually, that's really a good point mm -hmm. that you talk about children because the more I grew mm -hmm. and the adult within me, the more I understand. So they say that um, from zero to seven, you have 80, a capacity of 80% 80 of, of your creativity. And from seven and the enter in school, it goes down to 2%. 2%. That means like we, we lost this playfulness, playfulness, this oh, creativity. It's so important playfulness. I love yeah. playfulness in life. Yeah. And I try always to keep a, play, a space, daily space for playfulness, mm -hmm. for just getting, I love this expression, getting comfortable with the unknown because this helps me to expand my mind. When it comes to creativity, I'm sure you know those moments where you're maybe sitting in front of a paper and you cannot find your connection, you've called it the, the womb, where the women have their creativity stored in. So what do you do when you feel like, oh, now I do have, you are invited at one place and you can work as a tattoo artist for a certain period of time and you cannot find your connection to your inner creativity. And maybe some of us can relate to it. So what do you do then? Hmm. I mean, it happened to me before and um, I believe sometimes breaks mm -hmm. out of it, mm -hmm. like cut it, mm -hmm. um, it helps. Mm -hmm. I practice myself meditation. Mm. Mm -hmm. I love meditation. Isn't this like a gorgeous thing? One of the best things in life. It, it helps you, it really do. And 
it helps you technically or physiologically mm -hmm. it helps you to deconnect to your mind mm -hmm. what i was saying before so reconnect mm -hmm. to your creativity but as well it's for me it's a lot about my environment mm -hmm. like i can't be sit in a supermarket and be like in the corner sitting on the bank and be like now you draw and <laughs> <laughs> yeah i need i have like i need my space and mm -hmm either silence either mm -hmm. a bit of music and there's an emotional stage as well because some people say you know emotion brings a lot of art mm -hmm. which is true you know i i like i even remember myself being a kid and after my mother passed away when i was seven and the time i realized it a little bit later um i spent a lot of time on my own listening music and singing and dancing and and creating and and just flowing mm -hmm. through it and you know this is all art you know and i was mm -hmm. and i was really living my emotion through it and my feelings and and yeah you told me your mom uh was an artist did she encourage you in your artwork when you were younger? Do you have um, someone who told you about your relationship or you can even remember? And if so, to what extent do you think it was important for your development that you had this artistic environment back home? Um, so I am only a child mm -hmm. and I think what has been a big play in my artistic uh, in my creativity side mm -hmm. um, is how much I was playing on my own outside. Mm -hmm. I used to live uh, in the countryside and grew up uh, close to the hills and I was really left on my own and I was with my dog and I was playing, I was, you know, I, I, and I, I played a lot with cells and potions and plants and running around. And I do believe when I look back now, mm -hmm. this really helped me to uh, build my creativity. And I look at kids now in, in the iPad and this is, it's, it's a key note. It mm -hmm. is. I, I truly believe it is because, yeah, that's where everything, my playfulness and, and it would maybe even be different if I had siblings, you know. Um, but yeah, mm. and now our mom is so creative that at some point I was creating too much in my own. <laughs> yes. If I may touch that, but I think you're fine with it because we've spoken about it earlier. You told me your mom passed away when you were seven years and then you were taking responsibility at a very young age for yourself. You went to the groceries, you started to cook for yourself. You were living with your dad, but your dad was, he was due to certain reasons, maybe you know them, can be because he was incapable, or there was no space in his life, he had just not seen it and didn't recognize it, but he couldn't be there for you as you might have wanted his support at that young age. Mm. And I think you said that this was a period where sadness was also part of your life, and at the same time, I remember you saying a period where you learn a lot and now at the age of 27 you look back at the period and you can see how much strength you could build up on that. So what do you remember of that period in your life and to what extent do you think it has marked you and why would you view yourself now being even stronger than before? Mm. Um, I believe experience builds us. Mm -hmm. And um, because, so the, the advantage of this situation, I uh, felt that I was uh, emotionally not really invested or met even physically, to be honest. I moved with him, I was seven years old. He was working a lot. And then from 10, I was uh, really left on my own and, and feeding myself and dealing with this. And um, the advantage that I, I keep was how much freedom I had from it. Um, and you know, when you leave a little bit of um, a chaotic childhood, mm -hmm. uh, you have tendency to cut mm -hmm. your emotion out. Mm -hmm. So I was cutting emotion from my body and I realized this not a long time ago when mm -hmm. actually I was suffering from different um, 
pain in my body and I could go on for hours with that with for example migraines or something mm. and not really um, relate to it and then actually it's because it's a it's um, mechanisms that we, we yeah. defense yeah. mechanisms that we create you know and so I remember actually feeling really free to experiment anything mm -hmm. and um, at that time growing up like 13 years old I was hanging out with people that was older than me and I started trying drugs and going out and doing so crazy things and I think I experimented all <laughs> <laughs> and I mean and it built who I am honestly and I know like today I'm a totally different person and I've never been I think as healthy as I am um, but even losing my mother you know if I didn't have this I don't know who I would be today probably is such a different person um, yeah so and the same for my art like I believe the darkness and the sadness and the suffering um, that I've been through that I don't call nowadays sufferings mm -hmm. you know but is a part of what give me um, this inspiration or this sensitivity this empathy for human beings yeah. and you know, for connection this this drive for life mm -hmm. and this passion for for mm -hmm. everything around me you know mm -hmm. for just living and mm -hmm. eating and sleeping mm -hmm. and loving you know that's that's a part of it I would like to ask you three questions, if I may. Please. If you would have, um, once you will have most probably a daughter, and the daughter is something mm -hmm. 10, 11, 12, what kind of advice when it comes to empowerment would you like to give her? <laughs> um, play trust yourself like I've been spending wasting so much time overthinking stuff mm. that was no worth it but trust me if I have a daughter nothing that's what I live will happen to her <laughs> and she will absolutely not come in coming in this life with the same baggage and this is like the baggage you mean, like the baggage you had to live through in your life. Yeah, because you wouldn't like to want your daughter to live with the same. Yeah, because actually, mm -hmm. when you give birth to a kid, this mm -hmm. kid is is holding the baggage of the parents, mm -hmm. even from like you know the first hours. If those parents haven't dealt with their traumas and traumas from generation to generation, we we know that then the kid will just everything and then this kid then later if mm. it has to deal with this and that will happen you know I I, I heritate from the traumas of my parents as well and and if I heal myself properly then my my daughter wouldn't have to live all anything like it mm. and I would love her to be empowered and for her to face her fears and that's one of my favorite quotes because when you do face what you fear mm -hmm. the fear disappears and then what you get back from it is confidence trust and empowerment, and, empowerment. and that's mm -hmm. such a beautiful life lesson i think mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. I, I i love the idea of empowerment it's such a beautiful strength that no matter what you are doing it has a Bind so many traits and so many qualities um, and I think this would also lead me to the second question I would like to bring up here <laughs> when it comes to men because I can see you are really empowered you are again financially independent I can see your strength I can see that you try to work on what you are triggered by yeah, to make that become smaller, that you are more yourself, more grounded. You said healing to the process, clearing your mind, maybe at a point managing your emotions better 
again to not be so easily triggered but we are generally we, everybody from us knows that you can be so triggered by certain person or situations so when you have a look at your potential partner the more awakened you are maybe the more you also ask for an awakened man so what would be a perfect composition of your future partner? Hmm. Good question. I think um, self-awareness, mm -hmm. compassion, mm -hmm. understanding, mm -hmm. patience um, are one of the most important mm -hmm. qualities mm -hmm. and it's the quality um you know i believe the quality that i want to build in myself like i can't ask someone i want you to have those qualities mm -hmm. i have to have them mm -hmm. you know and it's something i'm still working on mm -hmm. like patience and trust trust in myself it's hard to trust people when you have mm -hmm. a certain uh, standard mm -hmm. of people that you know um educate you or made you in this world but yeah it's i had a lot of lessons through this and there's a lot of acceptance when you can accept yourself you can accept others mm. and mm. yeah and so it's the self-love and i think you said a very very important thing you said like i cannot just imagine the man i would like to have i cannot bake it, bake it. Um, I first have to look at those traits I'm looking for the other person. I'm living them by myself, that they are part of me, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, the, the thing that I've mm -hmm. understood as well is um, I haven't reached it yet, but <laughs> <laughs> it's like when I love myself and accept myself, I can accept any trait in someone else. It's, when do you feel that you do not love yourself? What are the moments in your life mm -hmm where you are not, this is a sub-question, one mm. of the last ones, when do you feel like, oh wow, Leah, at that point of time, I did not love myself? When I self-sabotage myself, that's really subconscious, but I... I do you have an example this. for that? Oh yeah, for sure, when I really want to do like a piece of, like um, it's an experience mm. that happened a long time ago, <laughs> and my friend was upset <laughs> with me. But this is a trait of sabotage. I don't know mm -hmm. if it's significant for you, but um, I wanted to offer to my friend a piece of art with her mm -hmm. one of her picture, and uh, she's been waiting for it, and I've been really meaning to do it, and I just didn't. Mm -hmm. And this is a part of self sabotage. Or for example, like this is why is this a self sabotage? Because because procrastination is. Mm -hmm. Because it's something that is dear to me because my friends are really close to mm -hmm. my heart and I really care for that to, you know, mm -hmm. share and serve and mm -hmm. being my best, mm -hmm. best self for the mm -hmm. people that I love. And if I can't do it, it's a deception for myself. Mm -hmm. So I decept myself and I decept the mm -hmm. person as well. It's a very, very good approach. A really wise approach. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it's... it's I mean, realizing it's it's self awareness. It's it's already I believe half of the job. Mm. 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 But to say something else as well, it goes with our body. You know, I've been through uh, ten years of eating disorders, and uh, last year I went through the recovering with such a process. But I saw myself emotionally eating is as well as self sabotage. You know, is is hurting yourself. It's not treating yourself in a good manner. Mm -hmm. Yeah, understand. exactly. And I've been doing it until mm -hmm. hurting myself, and this is pure self sabotage. Jeez, with you, we have to a lot. It's just twenty seven, <laughs> <laughs> and so many years to live. Yes. Yes. but only better. <laughs> so, but I think we can all agree. Like those people that I know that are the most interesting ones they all have gone a path in this life, you know? They all went through some dark periods in their life. They have done facing their shadow players, mm. yeah? And went through 
shit. Mm. To call it so easy, right? Mm. Mm. Yeah, if nothing happened to you, then then how duality? Mm. We experiment the duality. Of no, emotions. this is also my concept of life. I love duality in life yes. because it's all like this, yes. right? It's a concept that is learned so much. And then from the two extremes, you learn, no, yes. I don't want to be like that. I don't want to be like that. I just want to yes. be balanced in the middle. And that's how you can empathize from the two extremes as well. Mm -hmm. And you can be compassionate, mm -hmm. you know, more compassionate and bring all. I have another sub question for you. Because one of the first interviews I did was the one with Dave from Astana. And he said, there is no balance in life because with or it's not good to aim for balance i think this is what he said i don't want to misquote him and he said like with balance there is stillness there is never balance in nature and he views like balance as well again i don't want to misquote him but this is what i took out of the conversation is also something that means death so it's good to also have not all the time balance in your life because then you can develop yourself Yeah, I understand his point and um, it's a part of being passionate, I guess. Yeah. It's a part of running in the two extremes, yeah. which is fair enough. But if you go to one and the other extreme, it meets in the middle. So even if you're there and only there every now and then, there's still like physiologically a balance in the middle. If you two from one point, then it's unbalance, I believe, if you never the other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's balance. You can't be just in the middle from the two extreme. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. The last one. Unfortunately, because I really enjoyed talking to you. So the last question I would have is, if you could play God from very above there, and you could have the possibility to give as a gift to the world creativity, Hmm. How would you do this? And I ask you that question because I view creativity as one of the key, key, key traits we all should have in our lives. So if you could play God, how would you do that? So first, I believe we all creative. We mm -hmm. all have it. We human being, we mean to create. We create our reality by what we believe, by what we see. Mm -hmm. um, but in the point that I would love us to all switch our way mm -hmm. of thinking and a way of seeing success mm -hmm. and the the way to see mm -hmm. duality on people as well. Mm -hmm. The way that we all want, you know. Mm -hmm. you, you can be my sister. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Or a part of myself. <laughs> But it's it's like if we if we mm -hmm. believe this, like The whole world will be different, mm -hmm. and and if we don't run after money to be able to live, then we will be able to run after what we love, mm -hmm. what we're passionate about, mm -hmm. what we just have this mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. thing inside of us that tells us, ah, oh, I want to do that, and if there is not this the system of of economy, then we will be more free to experiment what we love and hopefully not lost ourselves because mm -hmm. maybe there will be different system to support mm -hmm. mental health and and like in in countries in india for example they have gurus in every families and they teach them how to be happy from a really young age with nothing mm -hmm. so you go in india and you walk around and everything everyone is happy even if they live in in a little garbage as a as a cabin you know and and they just learn how to be happy and we haven't mm. we haven't and then we run believing that success is recognition is owning that much of money or owning that much um material but is it really or what? is it really is so it really? you can ask yourself another question is it really ah <sighs> yeah Thank you so much for having spent time with me and thank you for having spent time with us. I hope you feel as inspired as I do right now and I really have to thank you from the bottom of my heart. We touched a lot of subjects from shadow players to creativity to tattoos and where to put them on. 
If you want to find out more about Lea, you can have a look in the show notes. Please make sure you subscribe to the channel. Ideally, you also leave a review on the iTunes podcast and don't forget to keep on shining. Yours, Corina Rosa. Thank you.